Oh yeah, four pre-rolls in the studio. Spring is in the air. Everything is turning green. For the smoothest, coldest, biggest hits, you have to try Freeze Pipe. Freeze Pipe makes a unique line of freezable pipes, bubblers, bongs, and more. Visit thefreezepipe.com to check out their freezable pipes and bongs. Use code JRVP for 10% off. That's thefreezepipe.com and code JRVP for 10% off. This is disarming doing it right across from Anthony. It really is. Helix Sleep is back. The premium mattress band that uh, provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. They have 14 unique mattresses, including a collection of luxury models and a mattress for big and tall sleepers. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash JRVP. With Helix, better sleep starts now, Zip Recruiter, if you're a business owner, the last thing you want to do is sort through tons of unqualified candidates' resumes. So soak up all that summer has to offer and let Zip Recruiter do the work for you. Ready for that URL at ziprecruiter.com slash JRVP. That's where you can try it for free. Again, that's ziprecruiter.com slash JRVP. Zip Recruiter, the smartest way to hire. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune support and Vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Visit athleticgreens.com slash JRVP for a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. That's athleticgreens.com slash JRVP for pre-rolls. Even sweeter in person, but not as sweet as the stories we are hitting tonight, like the worst kind of house fire, the best kind of amusement park ride, and getting stabby while tubing, all coming up in episode 168 of the Jesselnick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. JRVP, Junior Vice President. If it weren't for Philo T. Farnsworth, inventor of the television, we'd still be eating frozen radio dinners. Ah. <laughs> uh. Working out the kinks here in the studio. I mean, it's got to be a little disarming for uh, listeners just to hear that, you know, masculine uh, voice of Aaron here who's helping us out in the All Things Comedy studios. You know, it feels like a bigger operation. You can watch us on YouTube. We're going to send that link out. We have a little set here, and I'm just gazing into those beautiful eyes, Anthony. Erica Temposi is dead. Stop. Um, yeah, it, it was fun to watch you do pre rolls. Uh, we haven't done this in person in almost a year, I think. Uh, the podcast, and now we're in person and on camera. It feels like we're doing a podcast in a movie. Mm. You know, like you you were, looked like you were kind of acting as you're doing the pre rolls, which was fun to see. I was like, should I be doing something to make it interesting if you're just watching this on YouTube? But it's just a one shot on you, so we don't have to. No, it's also an audio podcast. I mean, mm -hmm. we want everyone to watch us on YouTube. I think it'll be funny. If you're a big fan, there'll be like little behind the scenes I disagree. Uh, things to see, but it's still an audio podcast. I, dis I, I think it's an audio podcast. I disagree that we want people to watch it on YouTube. You can, if that's your thing. We're allowing you to do that. <laughs> uh, we came into the All Things Comedy studio. It's bare bones in here. Uh, it does not look good. They did their best, and we can make it changes. It doesn't look bad. I don't know why you're saying bad. that. Like, it's, it's bare bones. We don't have any personality. There's no JRVP like, personality in here. We just, we just did the bare minimum, and now we'll change it over time. So if you do watch it on YouTube and you have suggestions for how we can spruce things up in here, uh, go ahead and comment on the uh, YouTube page. I don't know where it's going to be. I've been told that, I am, uh, that I'm getting a YouTube page to put this on that it'll live on. But I was also told, told that when I announced my tour dates this morning that they would be up on my website, and that did not happen. Uh, total disaster this morning. Of They've been building this announcement for months, months, since they even like booked it. They were like, okay, 10 a.m. It was supposed to be Wednesday, and they moved to Tuesday. Who is they? Like my team, like my agents, our boy Burke and his people, uh, my people. Everyone's been on the, the same page, getting everything ready, getting announcements ready. I m wrote up a tweet last night to go at 10 a.m. to like be like a pre-scheduled tweet. I woke up this morning at 9 I was up late last night reading a terrible book. You ever like read a book that just sucks and you're waiting for it to not suck, but it doesn't. It just gets getting worse and worse. I've started, when I run into that now, I've started skimming. 
I mean, I don't feel bad. Like, if, if I'm truly believing, like, that it's probably not going to recover, or maybe it will, but I'm going to skim to go find out. It wasn't that long a book, and I just got close enough to the end where I realized this isn't getting any better. I thought there was going to be a twist that would make it more palatable. And then I was just like, I want to finish this. I want to get it off my plate. And I was up to like four or five in the morning finishing the book. And then I, they were testing fire alarms in my building this morning. And so at 9 a.m., I like launched out of bed. It sounded like a nuclear siren uh, going off. And so I'm already pissed. I go downstairs. I'm looking. I'm like, okay, this tweet's about to send at 10. As soon as it sends, I realize that I left off the little like post, the little like uh, picture that they made up, the little poster. I just have the tweet, so you don't see the dates that I have uh, that I'll announce in a second on the podcast. Uh, and then I like, so I redo it. I'm like pissed, I'm mad, and I put the I put the poster up. I repost it, and all the comments are, "There's nothing on the website. There's nothing on the website." <laughs> they send me pictures of the website, and there's literally nothing there. And I can't believe it. And it turns out the website guy. Like when when some when things mess up like this, like I don't mind being disappointed. It's part of the game, but I hate being embarrassed. And this having like a tour date launch was embarrassing. And it turned out that the website guy was never alerted to uh, to the fact that he had to have this up by by this time. I don't know if he ever got the links in the first place, but someone from Team Jesselnik has been let go. Team Jesselnik is one person lighter. I didn't say I want someone gone. I just said this is embarrassing. And they were like, we understand. Just so you know, like someone's Dang. not moving forward. Yeah, that's how it goes. I don't know if this is the reason they got let go, but they are... Like permanently or just from helping you? Per, uh, permanently, their position. But it's not. I don't know if it's because of this or it was happening anyway. And they're like, well, we're throwing this person under the bus and they won't be here any longer. But I feel better now. Jessel it's up on Nick's, the website. Jesselnik's in a not effing around mood. I just uh, put it up here, though, on the site. And it's uh anthony is you know looking way better than it ever used to why do you say that like it's like it's still 10 a.m because the launch date was the launch time was 10 a.m and that's when i had the tweet scheduled for luckily the rest of my team waited i get it i'm bit. just telling the listeners it, it's been yeah fixed. well let me read the dates uh so again i think i've said this before uh october 11th is my 20 year anniversary of doing stand-up and uh, so just like, just this isn't like the, a tour. It's not the beginning of a tour. Like I'll be doing more dates next year, but this is just like what I'm doing to mark the 20th anniversary of me doing stand-up. Uh, so October 6th through the 8th, I'm in San Jose, California, San Jose Improv. October 13th to the 15th, I'm in Irvine, California at the Irvine Improv. October 20th to the 22nd, you guessed it, Oxnard, California at Levity Live. <laughs> Uh, October 27th to 29th, I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah, Wise Guys Comedy Club. Uh, November 3rd to the 5th, Phoenix, Arizona, Stand Up Live. November 10th to the 12th, back to California to Brea for three shows, or five shows and three nights. And then November 17th to the 19th, Ontario, California at the Ontario Improv. I, my agent gave me a bunch of dates or a bunch of clubs for like each weekend. And I just like, they gave us the most money. And so I was like, okay, that's great. And I haven't been on the road in years, definitely not since I got rummy. So I said, let me do, uh, let me do dates where I can drive to. That I don't have to leave, rum, find a, like a house sitter for rummy. What? Because I'm only doing seven weeks, so why not try to keep yeah, it but local? these aren't that close. They're clo it's a couple hours. I can drive and drive back as opposed to not like... Not San Jose. No, San Jose I'm flying. Uh, Salt Lake City flying, Phoenix flying. I'll be okay. gone for the weekend. I can find a house sitter for those weekends. But, uh, but and I love those clubs. San Jose, Salt Lake, and uh, Phoenix is three of my favorite cities, three of my favorite clubs. And then, uh, then just places that I can, I can drive to. But it will be fun. Uh, I'll be doing all my new stuff and then some classics, uh, about five to ten minutes of classics uh, for the people. Not because I don't have the time, for the people. That, uh, I'm no, just it's an anniversary. It's, a, it's an anniversary tour. The people want it. People want it. Yeah, it's people like, love anniversary. I'm tours. just saying, uh, like when you go to a concert, it's a, it's a fine line. I know comedy is different, but this is a rare exception where you can break out some old hits. Mm -hmm. Like people exactly. want to break out the hits. Some comics can break out the old stuff. Like Sebastian Maniscalco, if he's not talking about his grandma's lasagna or whatever the fuck, people are mad. <laughs> they don't want to hear the new stuff. You know, but I, I'm like, you've got to hear, you've got to hear the, uh, the great new things. Like Dave Chappelle, you want to hear the classic trans bits. You don't want to hear the new trans bits. <laughs> Give me those classic slams on the uh, trans community. Um, I'm loving uh, doing this in person again. You, even you doing uh, tour dates is bringing me back. Because we've been doing this now for four years. We started September 2018. We did uh, the Rosenthal and Jesselnick Vanity Project. Our JVP. 
on NFL media back in 2015. So we, we go back uh, a, a ways. But this podcast, we've been doing it four years, but it's been since before the pandemic. Uh, and it's just, it's better. It's better. It is. You know what it feels like? Because it feels like, uh, like RJVP was kind of like Friday the 13th part one. You know what I mean? Where the mom is the killer. And then we turn it into JRVP where it's kind of like Jason Voorhees coming to his own. This, now that we're coming to video, feels like Jason X. <laughs> you know, where he goes into space. People love Jason X. I love your website. Uh, if you put the cursor over different parts of the website, you get different Anthony reactions. Mm -hmm. So if you shop at the official online store, Anthony's like, eh, fine. You can go there. Like, check it out. Uh, if you go to our podcast, you just get a big smile. Like, you're way happier about uh, going to JRVP. And if you watch the new Netflix special, it's like, yeah, I'm the fucking man. That's it's a, it's all, a, diff all a, different faces. All three faces that I make. You get them all if you go to my website. Uh, it's just fun. It's interactive. The kids love it. A little merch update. Uh, we're very close. I think we gave our final set of notes, and I, I'm very excited for people to see it. I'm excited for you to see it. Greg has not seen the merch yet. Uh, we're going to have uh, multiple designs going up on the website soon. Hopefully, next week's podcast, we can Ooh. announce. Hopefully there my, is a link here, and all the link brings you to is your sold-out, bad, old merch. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Classic updated. merch, I like to call it. Not bad, old merch. Classic merch. Uh, as long as I am uh, announcing shows, just one last. If you listen to this tonight... I think the podcast will be up a little bit earlier uh, tonight, but if you hear it tonight and you haven't gotten tickets to see me and your old Droog at the Roxy in Los Angeles on the Sunset Strip, Greg has not gotten his ticket yet, so you're in good company. But uh, but come and check it out. I'm, I'm Wednesday, very excited. Wednesday, August 3rd. Yeah. Come out. I'll be in the crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Greg will be are in the crowd. Gonna, are we going to see you that. afterwards? Yeah, we'll have to talk uh, off air, you know. If I'm gonna come all that way, I wanna I wanna meet a, your old Drew. I think yeah. that'd be fun. Excuse me, I can send him a uh, like a thing and just be like, hey, can my friend come backstage afterwards? I the, uh, the only people I have are, I've got you and I've got Liz, Li but Liz is working. Liz is taking pictures. Mm. She's got the photo uh, like the photo uh, press pass and everything. That she, not only is she taking pictures, she's the only one allowed to take pictures in the building. She gets the pass that says only her. So I'm, uh, I'm excited for that. And I've never met a year old Drug in person. We've texted. We've talked a little bit. But uh, this will be, uh, be fun. And I, like, I was kind of worried. I'm like, how do I host a hip-hop show? I think it's like me, Drug, a DJ, and then a, uh, uh, another, uh, another artist. And, uh, and I was like, you know what? No one's there to see me. Like, I can just go out. And if I, I'm going to do like maybe 15 minutes up top. But if, uh, if they don't like it, I'm just going to introduce the DJ and get the fuck out of there. They don't, I don't need to, uh, to sit there and get booed. By a bunch of hip-hop fans. I don't think they're going to boo you. They're going to love you. And I noticed he has a cool opening act, Koreatown Oddity, mm -hmm. who, I, I don't know who I've listened to. Cool. Um, he's good. And I think he has a new release out. And, and he's a, a nice opener. Comedy does not do well in music venues because no one is there to see comedy. They just want to hear the band. And they want to talk. They have to like pay attention at the beginning of the show and focus up. And they're standing up. They're not sitting down. Sure. And it can be tough. I think I'll do, uh, do well. But I'm not going to like sit there and drag it out. I don't have time to do I'm just up there until the crowd says, you know what? We don't want this anymore. And I can bring up Drew again. I'm just excited to be backstage watching the show. I don't know what he's going to play, but he's got fucking like 100 albums to choose from <laughs> that I will be, uh, I will be excited. Um, other than that, Rummy got back from vacation last week and then promptly got bitten by a dog. Uh, I was walking him and some homeless guy had a dog. And ho homeless people's dogs are usually very chill. When I say homeless people's dogs, I don't worry about them because they're the kind of dogs that just sit there all day. Like, that's what they're used to. And this dog was chill, and then we walked by, and the dog, like, jumped up and, like, kind of bit Rummy. Like, not a hard bite, didn't know blood, but just, like, bit him on the back leg. And Rummy, fucking dumbass Rummy, doesn't, like, run away. We take a couple steps. He could have gotten away from the dog. He just turns around and stares at the dog like, what the hell? And the dog keeps on trying to bite him. The homeless guy's trying to pull him back. Homeless guy's not talking to me or Liz at all. Not just being able to be like, hey, sorry, just be like talking to his dog a little bit. We got him out of there. But it was like, welcome back to Hollywood, motherfucker. Do you enjoy your time in nature? Because that's over. Hmm. It's back to the homelessville. But he's good. It's a little depressing how many like stories like this you have um, of your neighborhood. Have you thought about uh, you know getting Rummy maybe to a a better place, better place for you too? You know, the, all these stories are are happening. Yes. Why do you think I'm doing this podcast with you? <laughs> to get a new place, to get out of there. I like, I like Slow it. Slow going. The new private club opened up again, so I've got a place to go and write every day. Okay. I went there last night and checked it out. So hopefully I'm, I can do this tour, uh, get some money, get this podcast going, get us both some money, and eventually buy a house. But it's a terrible time to buy a house in L.A. 
It's Although it might be getting better. I, I too might be looking um, to purchase my first home at some point in the near to, you know, distant future, depending on what happens here. Uh, and, you know, it's supposed to be coming, coming back to yeah. earth. Yeah, it should. Let me pitch you this duplex. <laughs> Do we, could you sell your wife on that? I would love it. We could use extra babysitting help. Um, would you be down for that? I don't Probably know. Would. I know you've sort of like outsourced your role as a godfather to just like seeing if you remember to ask what they want for Christmas or whatever. But this, they don't want this would be more. This would be more. Um, uh, boots on the ground. Frankly, it'd probably be Liz that steps up more, but I'm not trying to be like uh, a misogynist here. She just seems nicer. That's all. She's definitely nicer. I think Rummy would do a great job babysitting. But let me uh, on the <laughs> go back af- to the duplex. They're afraid of uh, Rummy. You and I get a duplex. Yeah. Okay. I get the top two floors. You get the ba- first floor in the basement. That's not how. Aren't duplexes next to each other? Mm-hmm. Welcome to Jokesville. You get it. <laughs> Our old friend Pete Gardner. Um, it was, you know, for a while, I think a bit of a slumlord. I don't know if he's still, he's kind no. of, he, he was a slumlord for like six months and then realized he how bought a lot. Was. He bought a lot of duplexes in them. the New Orleans area. I would love to, I would, lo- New Orleans would be the place I would want a duplex. LA doesn't feel really like nobody place wants for a it. duplex. Why would you want a duplex? Why would you be like, I want a neighbor who lives here. But That's like, what a duplex is. Because like, you're just such good friends, and it's like you're <laughs> such a good family. How long do you think we'd be friends be, if we lived in the same it'd house? It'd be great for the podcast. I don't know. I think we'd hate doing the podcast. Or the we, podcast yeah, would be us just recording other, yelling at each other. The podcast would end. But I, I do appreciate that this, that this All Things Comedy glow up here in the studio and our uh, improving download numbers and our improving ad rates – are going to help my kids go to college, maybe get a house, and help help you out. So just make sure uh, you leave five stars at iTunes. Leave a uh, review. We haven't asked for, for forever. Why are you groaning? We, have, we don't ask for much. You, now that we're moving to video, check out the YouTube. Is this it is it actually going to go up? Should I be worried about this now? We'll find out. I mean, if, the, if, you, if you're watching the video, you're watching it on YouTube. So, yeah, it's going to help. Um, but Greg is asking you. I'm not asking shit. Do, Don't leave any stars for all I give a fuck. As long as you listen, I'm happy. If you're hearing this right now, we're cool. You don't have to do anything. But Greg wants you to leave five stars so his kids can go to college. The YouTube will be worth it just to to see your reactions uh, for me trying to make a joke. Or just you being like annoyed at at something I said. It was kind of like your lack of reaction when I tried to make a joke on Sunday night uh, when we went to dinner with Mike. Oh, several jokes. Several yeah. jokes you tried to make that I was, and you you would make a joke. Mike would laugh, but like we don't have the friend Mike. He would laugh, and then he would Greg would look at me. He had to look over to me, and I was like, I'm not giving you anything for that. But I did my favorite moment of dinner. But it, no, wait, I want to defend myself. It was because of the situation, the seating situation. You know, you made the move like I'm gonna take the seat on this side. You guys can go sit over to the banquet, and the, and that was a great restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it? The, in the, the Roosevelt Barish. Hotel, Hotel, the Bearish. Uh, highly recommend. But the, that seating situation was impossible. I either had to like totally turn my body and I'm looking at Mike, but then I never could see what was going on over with you on the other side of the table. So you want to see what, what's happening. It's not that I was expecting like some huge laughter, but you're not really involved in the converse. You know, you're not really involved in the group if I'm not seeing what's going on there. So I would, I would make a joke and then look over to you and you'd just be like looking there stone faced. These were fine jokes. So you, you think your jokes failed because of the seating situation? No, but that's why I m- more awkwardly was like needily looking to you for the laughter was more I, it, I would have been doing that no matter what I was saying it just wasn't awkward I just think they could work on their banquets that's what you call it the banquets the bank I think it's called a banquet you know what, what you sit in you mean a table no it's like a people know sure uh yeah I mean if you're looking to me for laughs for validation you're you're in the wrong place anyone not just my best friend uh but anybody and we had a good time I enjoyed uh your company my favorite part the, <laughs> well, the hardest that I laughed what a compliment I mean that's like that's like like something a, a robot or or someone that didn't enjoy someone's company would say. Well, I wasn't rolling my eyes at your job. I wasn't like, I wish you would stop. I was yeah. just like, I'm not like, uh, you'll get like maybe a smirk at best. But my favorite was <laughs> I, I talked about how I just started my, last week, I talked about starting my TikTok, having my first post and having it be like embarrassing. 
because you like you you have like I have like a thousand followers that have been accumulating over the months since I opened it, but I haven't posted anything. I'm like this kind of sucks. JRVP listeners, uh, now now viewers, now I can say that, and it, it makes sense. Stepped up and went and like liked the video, commented on the video, and it was like it was doing okay for like what it was. It was fine. The next day they post another one, or two days later they post another one, and within a few hours. I had like thousands and thousands more uh, mm. more followers. That all my video, they've done like five now, uh, five maybe six or seven, and uh, and they've all got over a million views except for like the latest one, which has been crazy. And there's one that Shit. was um, really yeah the park. The, I have a Parkinson's joke that has like three million views, and the comments are insane. Like people want to argue over like the edgier stuff, and I love. I think my my stuff is perfect for because it, like it makes each joke stand on its own. And if you like the joke, you just hear it again immediately. So you like get to like appreciate the wording, the timing. I really love Craft. it, and it's been fun to see. I was like, oh, I want to see what Gen Z thinks of me. They don't know who the fuck I am. And what's hilarious, I was like, how will I know who's Gen Z and who's not? And apparently the beginning of one of my jokes, I think it's the Parkinson's one, is like when I was 13 or something like that, it's, it's the, the first line of the joke is the same as the first line of a Justin Bieber song. And I had no idea. But like everyone keeps commenting like the rest of the song. And I was like, what are these song lyrics? People keep writing on my thing. And like hundreds of comments talking about how they thought I was singing the Justin Bieber song. I think it's Baby. And I have never heard the song. I don't know anything about Justin Bieber, but that's how Gen Z is uh, is uh, is feeling me. They're comparing me to Justin Bieber, one of the greatest artists of all time. I mean, Baby's good, but I, but I'm talking to Greg and Mike about my TikTok and telling them how like how crazy it's been. Like I went from 1,000 viewers last week, last Tuesday, to 82,000 as of today. And followers, uh, you followers you're saying yes. you, and, and million viewers on each of the million videos. views, but followers is like, you, that's insane. I didn't know you could even follow someone. I thought you just like saw what scrolled through, but you can like follow somebody. And I said, I, I, Greg's like, Oh, you're, it's doing well. Let me see. And I hand Greg my phone or Greg looks up my TikTok on his phone and immediately screams. He picks up his phone and goes, you're posting too much. Like screamed it. That was Instagram. I was looking at Instagram. I don't even have t TikTok, but yes, that, yeah, Instagram. But it's like there have been maybe a handful, maybe ten <laughs> posts over the over the past month. I didn't scream, but I you just screamed. I opened Instagram and I hadn't opened it in apparently half a week, and it said four new posts from Jesselnik. And uh, far be it for me to know like best practices. Clearly, I'm talking out of my ass, but that just seems like a lot of posts. For like you're posting daily on Instagram, is that is that what people are doing now? How many days like, are in a that's week? That's like a lot. How many days are in a week? Seven. It's been seven days since you looked at Instagram. I had no, four it, new posts. it had been four. It had been like four or five days, and it had been four new posts. But apparently, that's that's new best practices. I thought Instagram for like the posts, not the stories, was a little more like less is more. Let's make it special. But you're you're sending out the reels. It's different. You're sending out the hashtags. You know, classic hashtag dad. That's, uh, the, that's what people people go into Instagram. <laughs> they search hashtag dad. That's what the cool kids are into, is looking up dad stuff. That was my only response to one mm -hmm. early last week was just hashtag dad and people people appreciated that. I guess they need to get on TikTok. I though. leave it to the team. My Instagram is garbage. I think because I haven't been verified. TikTok, they verified me almost as soon as that one post blew up. Well, I don't they verified think it's, gar me. it's not garbage, but it's, you're not getting 7, a million. 000. You're yeah. not getting a million views on on yeah. it or anything. It's like seven thousand followers on Instagram, like eighty some thousand on TikTok. That I will see. I think once I get verified, and eventually they will do that for me. Uh, I don't know what I have to do, but uh, but yeah, I'll be. I would I'll just say good. like lean more into hashtag dad, uh, of just course. like Jessel next style. That is, it's almost like a redundant because everything on TikTok revolves around hashtag dad. I um, it, there is something disarming because you're someone who's very careful about your what you put out publicly, mm -hmm. like your image and this and that. And so there is something disarming as your friend of so many years and seeing. What I'm you careful produced. about what I put out privately. That's true too. That's very true. Um, about seeing captions that are clearly not written by you that mm -hmm. aren't like funny. Yeah, I would and never so do a caption. There's part of me that that wants. That wants your voice on that, you know. But my like, the, no one's gonna have a caption. Like that's not a thing you would search for. Is whatever I say. But hashtag dad. That's I get universal. it. It's like the the hashtag Everyone's dad. Everyone's got a dad. It just says a roller coaster of emotions. Hashtag dad. Hashtag caregiving. Hashtag life. Hashtag stand up comedy. Those are all. Those are the four <laughs> biggest ones. Hashtag dad. Roller hashtag coaster. Caregiving. By the way, is one word. I mean, not again. Not gonna go too crazy. Going line by I've line. I've heard it both ways. Okay. I'm just. 
trying to give it's constructive feedback but they do have the tour dates up I'm yeah ex- i don't know well, i don't know how the hashtags work i don't care like the the, the tour date sounds like it's from your voice it ends with that happy anniversary I assholes i like that i wrote that, that one that feels more like home there was a one that they they sent me one uh an instagram post it was like a picture of me from largo that liz took and the quote was from sharon stone did you see that one? It was just like, yeah, like yeah. I, when I dance, I dance hard or something like Sharon Stone. <laughs> that was funny. That's, yeah. It seemed like and, it was from and you. They sent me that. that. Yeah, that I was like, oh, cool. Sharon Stone keeps on messaging me, but she's sending me. I thought she might say like, hey, why am I seeing like, why, why are people tagging me in comments to you? Uh, I'm sure she doesn't listen to the podcast yet, but she's been sending me. She sent me like an article, like just some <laughs> random article. What? And let me see if I can find it. She sent me a random article and then like a stand up clip of some a female stand-up I've never heard of talking about what it was like growing up in the 70s. And I was just like, what? Why, why, Sharon? Well, I think there's an obvious guess to why. I mean, I think there's an obvious, you know, path that people sometimes go on when they don't really know each other, but they just start sending very polite, like, DMs to each other. Like, that starts to a path to, to something more. She sent me an article from goldenglobes.com entitled Sharon Stone. Colon, filmmaking can affect the way we think and feel, which <laughs> I, did not, I have not read it yet, but I will. And then she sent me a, um, a stand-up clip from Karen Morgan, <laughs> who I've never heard of, saying, we survived the 70s. But I was, just, I, I was like, why would she send this to me? And I watched it, and I, was, I still don't know. I have no idea what, uh, what that's about. But I'm, I'm here for it. I haven't responded with anything, but like, if she wants to send me stuff all day long, I will, uh, I will glance at Please. it and then not click the link. We, yeah, we need help from our listeners and we need uh, more help from Sharon, I think, mm-hmm. just for material. I love this. as This could be a new weekly segment. It oh. could be Sharon's corner. What, what's Sharon doing? <laughs> I do like that. Well, now that we're here in person, I did miss – I think it was at its best uh, in person, but now – We've got Aaron here helping us out, and like when you get the Aaron laughter in the corner, that's big. That's yeah, what, I mean now that now that Erica's gone, we wanted to add a uh, a feminine voice to the podcast, change things up a little bit. Um, rest in peace, Erica. Shining shining down on us. Jeez, no. you're you're hitting that too hard. She's and now doing it's, a great job. It's not it's not time. It's not time for anything. You got more. You got more for the week. I, I wanted to tell you a story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told you. Tell me a story. Okay, so I was at, uh, I mean, I, w- I had it. We, I had something from the week. <laughs> might, might as well talk about it. Um, went to concert uh, at the Greek last week, the night before my family got back. They're back in town, as you know, from Japan. Sharon Van Etten, Angel Olsen, Julian Baker. It rocked. It was, it was uh I've heard all of them my except alley. Julian Baker. Very much my shit. Not, wouldn't be everyone's, but very Who much. Who did you go with? Because you went after the podcast. I went by myself. Okay. Which is totally cool. JRVP supports going to con- yeah. concerts by yourself, movies by yourself, dinner by yourself. Do it. So, Do it solo alone. Solo is the way to go. Unless you have someone that obviously shares loves a you. passion. Yeah, or loves you. Or even likes you. But once you're older, you realize like bringing someone to a concert where you're way more into the artist than they are is just annoying because you're thinking yeah. about that other person. And so it, it was fantastic. But Emika doesn't lie. I mean, I'm sure Emika She wasn't in town. Yeah, she, okay. it was the night before they got back. Gotcha. She, she probably would have gone. Uh, and it was, it was a great show. But before it started, uh, I'm just sort of texting in like the concourse area right before I go to my seat. And I kind of see Steve Malkmus, the singer of Pavement, of from about 20 feet away. And I've actually exchanged emails with him back in like the aughts and maybe early 2010s. I was in a fantasy football league with him, basketball league with him. I doubt he remembers any of this. And more recently, like we DM here and there about tennis. He knows I'm super into tennis. He he probably knows I'm a big pavement fan too. But he knows you as, does he know he's just Greg Rosenthal or Greg Rosenthal of the NFL Network? Yeah, of of initially Roto World because he was into fantasy sports and we had a mutual friend that worked at Roto World, Steve, Steve Alexander, and I ended up being in a league and he's very into sports and into fantasy sports so he knew he knew of me. And does knew he know me. you're a huge fan? I think he, I think he knows, because I, I, I'm, I doubt he really knows me that well. But he knows I'm, I'm this guy, yeah, and that I, I'm a fan. I'm cool. And when's whatever. the last time you talked to him or messaged him? I could check, but it's probably within the last year. 
Certainly. We we DM about like he's a big Daniil Medvedev fan. We we DM about tennis. Okay. Basically only tennis. DM at this on point. what on, on Twitter okay. on Twitter. But it's very occasional. It'll be for a while or like his fantasy drafts coming on and then it it's hot and heavy for a month and then it goes another year. Yeah, with year. Dev Medvedev, you want to pace it out. <laughs> Medvedev, Daniil Medvedev. Anyways, but we've never met in person. Uh, and in that moment, and you only really have like that one second to sort of make a decision. Like, mm -hmm. should I go? Now we I... see, is he surrounded? Is people, are people talking to him? I would think no. that's a concert that he would get recognized. And no, talk not to. at all. No. Tall dude. Never seen him in person. I, I knew it was for sure him just because it's is he by himself or with, with people? He's with his wife. Okay. And I don't know if that was part of the, the just hair trigger decision i did not go say no. hi to no how much effort would it have taken to go to him nothing he was 15 feet away okay. and then he walked he like walked pretty much right by me because he was heading like towards his seat and i think like who knows for for a half a second it felt kind of like the hey do i know that guy or not from, from him too and then we both sort of looked away and that was that and um that's just, uh, I, I'm just saying, like, what, what, what would you have done? Was that the... Uh, I understand what I wish did. I did, but I basically was like, eh, I don't want to bother him right now. And, like, the gummy's, like, just hitting right now. Okay. And it's like, eh. Okay, you left out okay. a big part of the story. Yeah. Because the gummies, the gummies kind of make your decision for you. Yeah. Uh, it's probably better to... If I always think of I'm on the, I'm on the edge, because you don't want to, like... Decide you're going to say hi, and then be almost like too over eager because there you have right. this like little moment that I I've definitely kind of backed away. I'm sure if you've been like, hey Steve, it's Greg Rosenthal, and like, I'm sure it would have been it would have been. Oh, cool I have no doubt it would have been cool, and I would have been I would have kept it quick and and kept moving, uh, and it would have been all cool. But I just uh, I don't know. I didn't do it in that situation. Did you? DM that him? might be it. That was our chance. Did you? I'm sure you might see him again. Did you DM him afterwards? And no, say, I hey, meant to mentally. I was like, oh, I'll DM mm -hmm. him tomorrow. Uh, about it, but then I forgot. This isn't quite like a Questlove email address situation, like disaster, but I get exactly, I don't think you did anything wrong. No. I think it's always best to like not put yourself out there and talk to someone if, you, if you're on the fence. Like I almost would have been more likely if I hadn't been DMing and emailing over the last 10 to 15 years, but then it was like I've never met him in person. I was like, I, I don't know. It just felt... Felt, uh, but it's all you have to come up with all that in one second. It probably was the gummy that ultimately made the decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, was I mean, just it's like, a big I don't part want, of the I don't want this to go, uh, to go poorly. But I'm sure if you did, if you had and just said hi quickly, it would have been, it would have been cool. But I think you probably made the right call. Now that I've but talked about it, by the way, on like a fucking world famous podcast, mm -hmm. I actually might DM him now, uh, and mention it because like I, now I don't want people like adding him and being like what you know it, i i did need to him? like you know put mentioning him on twitter or something like saying the story i think it's weird to dm him now a week later yeah i talked about in the podcast that i dm you get out in front of this before the fans start harassing you and your wife i wish i didn't just mention that don't do that by the way don't, <laughs> don't do that to people why did i mention They're not, that? no one's gonna bombard steve malcolmus on twitter um you done yeah i'm done and now it's time for did we get any notes? <laughs> I love it. We, we've we decided to abandon the music here on JVP. We were like, okay, now Erica's, Erica's no longer with us, uh, no longer on the planet Earth. We've got to uh, kind of do some things ourselves. Greg is in charge of now playing the theme song. He's in charge of playing some other clips. Aaron is in charge of some of the, uh, the sound bites we need. But for that in-between music stuff, we just decided to get rid of it entirely, and we'll be using swipes from now on. The same swipe for everything, and uh, Greg's got to hit a button. So we'll, we'll see how the timing works out, but uh, we're excited about these swipes. We can, change, we can swipes. change up the swipes. We could always go we'll back. We'll change up swipes. We'll go back to the music, but it seemed like a lot of, a lot of work. But I will say that uh, um, All Things Comedy is very happy we're here. We came in and toured the studio at the end of last week, met Aaron for the first time. They, uh, everyone seems happy we're here, and we're, we're happy to be here. It's been fun all, just for the last 20 minutes doing this podcast in person, staring in each other's eyes. It's been great. It's a lot. Right across the table. It's awkward. Look at YouTube to see how awkward it is. Find it. Try not to touch yourself. We're, we're Try. We're making Aaron work hard because he has to change cameras every time. It's, it's, it's his job. It's not hard. There's two cameras. Aaron, Aaron, can, Aaron can handle it. Aaron can handle whatever curve ball we throw at him. One of us talks, then the other one talks. Aaron's on top of it. You think it's awkward looking right at each other? It is a no. little because we're very close. The other podcast I do, the Around the NFL podcast, is more like a semicircle. And so you're not really like looking at the person all the Go time. Go on YouTube and see our noses touch. 
We're so close. <laughs> Wait, I do have I do have a note. Yeah. From you Debbie? ready for it? Is it from Debbie? It's from my mom. She has a note, and she said, "If you're gonna say that she's topless, she wants merch, free merch." What if I give her a shirt that says, uh, "Little Debbie's in the house, but the breasts are cut out," <laughs> so she can wear the merch, but to, but it's just like it's Debbie hanging out of them. Would she would she be on board? And I, would would the listeners buy that merch? Right. I've got to say, was this just specially made just for her, or would this be something that everyone could buy? It's her own line. Because no, she wants regular merch. She wants like free merch. She just we... wants merch from us. She doesn't want it to be about her necessarily. Oh, yeah. But she might not. I think she actually might like the 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 idea of it, not the topless part of it. But if you're gonna you know use her in such way, she wants some payment essentially. Debbie merch. will love. Debbie will love the uh, merch. Debbie will ha- finally have a reason to put a shirt on when she sees the shirts that we have for her. <laughs> Summertime's over, Debbie. Time to cover up. We're sending them your way. Send Greg. Uh, send Greg your t-shirt sizes, your sweatshirt sizes, crew necks. What kind of stickers you want? Uh, T Public is doing it all. But we'll uh, hopefully we'll have it next week or by the week after at the latest, and uh, we'll hook up all the moms with with, uh, with free merch. And that was, did we get any notes? And now it's time to take it down to a place that has recently been renamed and retooled, streamlined, if you will. It's email corner. All right, we've got a, uh, a number of emails this week. Please, please email us at jrvp, junior vice president at gmail.com. So that's all one word, jrvp, junior vice president. At Gmail, we want you, we need you. I already mentioned the iTunes stuff. I won't do that. Well, we're going to bang through this quick. Anthony. No, we're you, not. We, got, we added like, I just four, mean we like four questions. My point is like we're going we're gonna to hit this rapid fire because we had a lot of good questions this week. We'll also take uh, story ideas, which you guys are already sending there. Uh, but I appreciated that. You, you know, go to, go to Reddit and put story ideas on Reddit. That's, what, no, that's, that's where I better. go to look yeah. for story ideas. Reddit is king. They're, they were good. All right, Anthony, do you think comedians suffer from the same pitfalls that other artists deal with, Musi- musicians especially, in that after time goes on, they release more things and they tend to plateau and most of the time they regress? Do you believe that comedy can suffer from the same issue or do you believe that comedy is inherently different from other art forms? I don't know, but inherently I think it's different in that I think when comedy suffers, it's because, like let's say you put out your first thing, your first couple things, everyone loves what you do, and then you get other jobs because of what you did. People start acting, they're writing movies, they're directing things, and they're just not focusing on comedy. When people will still come and see them and pay money to see them no matter what they're putting out, so the product suffers. And they don't care. They're happy like doing their other things. Big stars, you're saying. Like- Big stars, or just anyone who, who gets a following and is able to work on other things. Like I've been very much like, I'm just doing stand-up. I'm not acting in anything. I'm not writing jack shit. I'm writing stand-up, and I'm podcasting, and I'm TikToking. With all the Gen Zers. Um, I mean, don't I, forget that Garfunkel and Oates appearance. That was like... Sure, I will act. One of my friends told me that they've got a part in a movie for me, but I don't think I'm getting paid any money. So we'll see if it works out with my schedule. But I'm, I'm happy to act. I just don't... It's not a, a, uh, it's not a passion. Um, and I think like musicians, though, you put out an album, like you have 10 years to write your first album, and then you, uh, mm. you've got like two, oh, a year to write your second. So that will kind of suffer. Musicians will get sick of what they've been doing. They, they get to play the same songs everywhere they go. So when they put out a new album, they want it to be different and evolve. Well, that's and it might separate separates to them. It's what separate, se- separates the great ones, though. Like if they're still improving four or five albums deep, and there are some that of do course. that. They're all Sharon Van Etten, who I saw the other night, was, is a great example. Like getting better. Like, and you have to have the courage. Angel Olsen was another one, a new album out that I love. I should be recommending her. But uh, that I hadn't gotten into, and then she sort of had the balls to play almost no, none of her old hits live on Thursday. Uh, but it worked. I suddenly am so into that album because it was amazing. Like, sure. I mean, there's, there's so many different examples. I just think, like, uh, like Mark Maron was telling me he interviews a lot of, like, older musicians who were, like, huge back in the day. And they're like, oh, that stuff back then was garbage. And I'm like, well, what do you think is your best stuff? And he's like, this new album. And he's like, the new album is terrible. <laughs> right. But they just, like, you just, you get you change, you get older, you don't care about what the fans think, you're doing it for yourself. And it's, it's sometimes not mm-hmm. as good. And, and art is obviously, obviously subjective. But sometimes the thing you're most known for and people love you for, you just don't want to repeat or you can't repeat. So I think, I think it's different for everyone. But comedy always evolves. Some people want the same thing. Some, Some comedians peak late, though. 
Of Mark Maron might be a good example. Of course, I mean, it depends on what you think of his peaking. Like his early stuff was hilarious. Okay. I mean, I think it's just as funny, but he's got the podcast. He maybe softened a little bit. Lewis Black didn't become a thing until like much later on in life. Rodney Dangerfield. I but mean, it seems like so Mark Maron, examples. for instance, is like still very creative and coming up with. Of course, it, it's still very into it, and so I feel like comedy, unlike. There's not a lot of musicians. I guess there's some that are still coming up with really good new stuff in their 50s. Yeah, it happens. I mean, it depends on who you're collaborating with, like what's happening and, or what you want to do. Some people are happy. Like, it's not like Steve Miller Band's putting out new shit all the time. He's just touring with, uh, with the greatest hits, playing that CD for everyone at Starlight Amphitheater. Shout out to the home team. Next question. Um, we're doing multiple questions this week. The only way to replace someone who reads a listener email uh, every week is to read four of them. Uh, Greg, I'm a diehard Philadelphia Eagles fan, <laughs> and headed into the season, I wanted to know your opinion and opinions around the league, if you're able to discuss oh, that, wow. about Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles heading into the season. Why, why did you want to, to answer this in the podcast? Because I just happened to see a random football question, and I was like, they happened to be asking about the team I have the strongest opinion of, of in 2022, which is that the Eagles are going to fucking be awesome, that they're going to fly, that they might win the Super Bowl, that they're going to be so fun to watch, that Jalen Hurts is, and that team is kind of kind of remind you of Lamar Jackson maybe four years ago. So if you're going to ask about the team I happen to feel the most passionate in, that I'm high on, that whatever their over-under is in Vegas, uh, here, you know, that I would go well over, then I, I'm going to say, let's answer it. Are you telling our listeners and viewers now to gamble on the Eagles to put everything to bet the I, house? I like I like their regular season schedule. I love their roster. I'm I'm big on the Eagles. All right, the next one's wait wait. wait. I want to go back to that. Do you feel you like said you, you wanted to be quick? Could you get fired from the NFL for talking about the Eagles on this podcast for no. giving away NFL expertise on the Justin Nick and Rosenthal Vanity Project? JRVP, Junior Vice President. Fuck yeah, Aaron. Damn. Seamless. I don't know. It kind of makes me cringe. I um. No, but I like it. I like I like the reading, but it's just such a hard uh, pivot. Uh, it's like waking up in bed next to your dad. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's well said. I have uh, I have a whole another podcast that we, which we're promoting here around the NFL. And believe me, if you've listened to that, I've been honking about how good the Eagles are going to be all off season and how excited I am. So I'm just uh, repeating it here. Aaron, edit out when he says around the NFL podcast. <laughs> what's our next? Uh, what's our next? All question? right. Um, it's a question to you about custom leather binding. Uh, it's a listener who said he's been custer, custom leather binding his favorite books and wondering what your opinion would be of a bound book of his discog discography. I don't even understand how that works. It would obviously be uh, for my personal book collection, and I won't do it if he doesn't want it to be done. But I wanted to know... If you had thoughts on the topic, Anthony, I do actually. I mean, I understand what you're saying. You, you would like a leather bound, like almost just my jokes written out, so you could just read them in a leather bound edition. That's very nice. I, huh. I appreciate that you would want that. Who's gonna I write would want it out? That. He's gonna write it out. They. I assume. I. I thought it was a girl, but maybe. It's okay, a, you're it's right. A, we'll say they. We'll keep it. We'll keep it cozy. Um, I, I, I thought about this when I was like thinking about a book deal back in the day. I was like, what if I just wrote out my jokes? Because I write my jokes in a specific way. I don't know if you've ever seen that, like how, the way I, I, I write them out, that I think it would be no. interesting on the page. And I think very highly of the way that I write my jokes and, or how they're written. Um, and I've thought about writing out like all you know four hours of the stand-up, but uh, no one would ever buy that. Uh, whoever is writing this email, you'd be one of the only people. Um, but I would, if there was like ten limited editions, maybe they would sell. I would, I would be okay with you doing it, but I'd want to be involved because the way they're la they they get laid out on the page involved. would be important to me. And that, and that's why I'm saying don't do it because I'm not going to be involved with this. But if I were going to, or you could, uh, I could show you how I write a joke. And then you could you could be like, okay, I'm going to take that template and write out your material and then send it to you, and I could approve it. If it was going to be a thing, if it even exists, I don't think it's like a. a um, it's a dangerous a precedent, uh, though, because if I was a big time, you know, fan of yours, I would just I would just say that I was going to do this just so I could have a one on one interaction with you. Yeah, and this is not going to happen. I'm just saying that in a perfect world, if you were going to do it, I'd want to be involved and be like, okay, this is the way it's got to be written out. Um, it's like you can just skip the line and go that. right to Sharon Stone status. Mm -hmm. Just like right to like back and forth every night. Mm -hmm. Send me that article from goldenglobes.com. But yeah, I mean, if you, if you really want to do it, go ahead. 
Uh, as long as you're not selling it or profiting off of it, I wouldn't. I would leave you alone. Mm. But if you want it done right, the way that I would imagine it, and I can't imagine it, if you were like, I want to spell out your jokes in Jello on the street, I'd be like, do whatever the fuck you want. But a leather bound book, that sounds cool. Um, that I would, I would want to be involved in some way, and I'm, I'm obviously not going to be involved. So do with that what you will, what thou'st willst. Limited edition, maybe on JustinLick.com, be part of the merch. Sell that, it for that, like a that lot. That website's filling Sell up, and they can't, lot. they can't even handle my tour dates. All right, our next question. Uh, last question? Your last one. That's, oh, I'm reading this one. Uh, all of the podcasts I've listened to so far, I've either had a guest, guests, or a guest host. I'm, I've not experienced that with JRVP. Maybe this has been asked before, but what is your position in having guests or guest host on JRVP? Maybe Greg could have uh, had a relaxing vacation in Japan without having to do the pod. Oh, thank you. Or maybe this is why all the other podcasts suck. An inquiring mind would like to know. Pepper. I don't want, I wouldn't want to do this with a guest co-host. Maybe if we like, if it gets bigger where we can't take time off or we needed to, cause I've done, I've sat in for uh two, two bears, one cave when like Bert Kreischer has been out, it's just me and Tom Segura. That was kind of fun. I would do it maybe once if my brother was in town and you were out, I'd be like, why don't we just do it? But I only do this podcast cause I can do it with Greg and it's not hard to do while you're in Japan. It takes an hour, hour and a half. Um, but yeah, I don't know if we would, we might have guests eventually. I don't want to. I just don't want to ask people to come and do it, even though people want to come and do it. I mean, we're four years deep into it. Uh, now, you were very adamant about we're not going to have guests in general, and I was all for that. And I think that's an effective way to do it. Like, like podcasts are not popular because of the guests. Now, sometimes, like, one guest in particular, if the podcast is already good, like, that can that can help you in everything, but it's one of the things I love about our NFL podcast. There's all these NFL podcasts that have great guests all the time and no one listens mm -hmm. because people aren't really like listening necessarily for that. Like comedy, certainly you could find someone funnier than me. So maybe, maybe I'm um, talking myself out of a job, but people mostly on podcasts just want to hear like people they want to hang out with and or like their relationship mm -hmm. like and you I, don't need guests i think we could eventually have them but when we do it's because we're out of ideas and we're bored <laughs> it's because we're like we're sick of talking about these stories and talking to each other let's bring someone in to try to save the marriage and so you'll it, know like, you'll know it's yes. us like phoning in season six or seven at that point the ad rates are even better mm -hmm. and it's like we're not gonna just shut this spigot off but we're yeah. phoning it in Cosby Show style when they added like Rudy. Exactly, it's a sitcom adding a cute kid or twins or whatever the fuck, and like in the last season before it goes away. When you see guests, that's what's happening, and we will do that when we get corrupted by the money. And that was email corner. Diamonds around the world unite. And now it's time for ad copy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, I'm excited to read this in person. It's about our friends at thefreezepipe.com. I like putting uh, the website right off the top. Thefreezepipe.com using code JRVP is where you can get 10% off all their items. And, and what, what kind of items do they have, Anthony? Pipes. They have a, yeah, they have pipes. Uh, they're freezable. They have bubblers. They have bongs. Uh, and they help you have the coldest and smoothest smoking experience um it gives you an, a little example that we could just like read off do you, you want me to that it's like after dinner i want you to that please, like i'm just saying this. there's different ways to do it that you just hit the gym this sounds like something you would do you you hit the gym around dinner time uh it's after dinner it's time to fire up a little netflix and a fat bowl i mean because if there's nothing anthony loves more than a fat bowl i don't know what it is the only problem is your old bong sucks um, and uh, leaves you with a scratchy throat and a coughing problem. Like, that's, that's not fun. You no. got the old resin in it. It's not You're coughing. coughing. Get a new bong and freeze it. You get the ice cold freeze pipe. Uh, it's engineered to cool smoke by over 300 degrees. They also have glass pieces uh, that will have you puffing bigger clouds. Basically, it's just efficient. When we were in college, we, we could have used this because it just lets you have uh, more smoke per hit without... Uh, painting your chest we had, our own, we had our own version of it but it was inconvenient and gross and probably unhealthy the casanova frankenstein uh, put an ice in the bong it's not good it, freeze your pipe it wasn't good you, yeah pipe. you put a cham chamber in the freezer for one hour as smoke passes through instantly cooled shop for the smoothest hit now at thefreezepipe.com use the code jrvp for 10 percent off that's thefreezepipe.com 
com and use the code JRVP for 10% off. I don't like Anthony looking at me as I'm like fumbling through these different ads. I'm just in awe how the, good you are. The next one. So he, good. I'm excited because we've had Helix Sleep as one of our sponsors for maybe two years. Midnight but, Deluxe. But they have a new copy now because they, they're not just uh, phoning it in. They're like uh, JRVP. They're moving into the studio. They're stepping it up. They are? Um, I just mean like they're adding new elements here. They now have 14 unique mattresses. They never used to talk about that before. They have a collection of luxury models. They have big and tall sleepers. Uh, They have ones even made just for kids. Helix, reach out to me because we don't have Helix uh, kids mattresses. We could add that to the mix. My bed's made for kids. (laughs) You uh, you take the Helix Sleep Quiz. You find the perfect mattress in under two minutes. Uh, it, it, for Anthony's, it, it ends up with a kid's mattress. Uh, then you get that personalized mattress shipped straight to your door, free of charge. You don't have to mess around with testing out uh, the new mattress and being all awkward in person. You test it out at home, and you get 100 nights risk-free. It's very easy uh, to send it back if you don't want it. So everyone's unique. You can get the memory foam layers. That's what we've got to provide optimal pressure. If you sleep on your side, you can get hard. You can get... uh, soft. You can get anything you want. They're American made. They come with a 10 to 15 year warranty. And remember, you get to try it out for 100 nights risk free. Helix has been awarded the number one mattress by GQ and Wired. Mm. Two of the best. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. $200 off. That's a lot. Go to helixsleep.com slash JRVP with Helix. Better sleep starts now. And that was... Bad copy. It's so amazing that GQ and Wired got together and finally agreed on something. They're, they've out each other's throats all the time. I used to think Wired was cool, but now it's like, I mean, not cool, but like acceptable. Uh, but now it's, I just think of it as like, like a magazine for libertarians. And that was undercutting ad copy. Let's get to headlines. Give me a whoosh. Shout out to the libertarians out there. It's just, it's fine. It's no slight. Libertarians are the worst. It's just like a phase. They're the you know, worst people. Everyone goes, it's like teenagers. It's like you'll go through the phase. You'll probably come out the other side. Like if you're stuck there, then, then yeah, you're the worst. Did you just see Fight Club? Congratulations. You're a libertarian. <laughs> Eat shit. <laughs> Grow up. Um, it's a two-party system, you done son of a bitch. <laughs> the Fight Club thing really nailed it because I think that was like the six month period where I was like, oh yeah, the libertarians, that kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Mm-hmm. But then you're like, oh wait, Ayn Rand, <laughs> give me a fucking break. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm swearing way more in the studio. Because you're with me. Yeah, there's it's uh, my time now. All right, there's nothing better, nothing better than getting revenge on your ex boyfriend by setting fire to his house. And there is nothing worse than accidentally setting fire to the wrong house when you're trying to get revenge on your ex-boyfriend. It happened. (laughs) I thought that was enough. It happened. It happened to a 49-year-old woman. She thought... She thought of everything, and I, we can get into it, except for the right address. She set fire uh, to this other guy's address in the same neighborhood that was not her ex's front porch uh, with bundles of wood and chainsaw oil. So a, a woman <laughs> and a man were dating. Yeah. They broke up. She was mad about the breakup. Or was yeah. she mad about something else? Mad about the break? Did you read the article? I did, but they don't give like a breakdown. It was an ex-boyfriend she was mad about. So did he like he dumped her, and then she was like, "Oh yeah, well I'm coming to burn the your house down." The police report doesn't like give the, the article the does. I, you didn't read it, the police it report. No, I read. It's not like I'm sitting by I, a fucking radio okay, listening to this. That's fair, but there are multiple articles, and many of these articles are just based on the police report, and and uh, this was the case. Okay, here. like I understand relationships can be passionate, breakups can be tough. People say things they don't mean. They do things they don't mean. But if you're not living together, like if they lived in the same house and she was like, I'm leaving and burned it down on her way out, we can talk. I can, I'll listen to your reasons. They don't live together. You, you, obviously. Because she, she didn't know which, which house was his. She tried to find his house, burned down the wrong one. I think the winner here is the ex-boyfriend. Certainly not. The big loser is the guy whose house got burned down, yeah. who was an innocent bystander. Second loser is the woman who's now got to go to jail, I would hope. But the guy who has a house, unburned, 
his ex girlfriend is not only he's like he's done because he, and all his friends are on his side. So he can be like, see, that's why I broke up with her. She's fucking nuts. She wouldn't have burned my house down and burned someone else's house down, and she's gone. She's in jail. He never has to deal with it again. There's not going to be a you up text. She burned his house down, <laughs> and he's got a story he can dine out on forever. That's true. He's going to tear it up in the North Carolina dating pool. That's. I feel like a lot of the winners on our news stories are the ones that just have a good story in the end and, and didn't get bothered. 100%. And the fact that this woman went to such lengths, and I, I think I, I'm not a detective here, but I think she was just, like, wasted. Uh, the picture... <laughs> The picture of her, because uh, they found her like a mile away. The guy who she tried to burn the house down confronted her with a rifle. He wasn't messing around. He didn't shoot. The ex-boyfriend. No, the guy whose house oh. started to burn down. The whole, all the details are amazing. She was literally on. She she went on this front porch. She got a bundle of wood and chainsaw oil. I don't even know what that is, but if I was going to burn down an ex's house, chainsaw oil sounds fucking badass. Uh, he, he comes on the porch. His porch is totally on fire. He, he goes to get his hose to, to put it out. The hose is plugged up with flex seal, like a, one of those sealants that makes it so that you can't... So He couldn't use the hose. Wait, did she, she do that? She oh put my God. the flex seal in. She sabotaged his hose? She sabotaged the hose, but she was still there, like, getting other stuff together. Like, the one on the porch was already cooking, but it hadn't really gone too crazy. Like, his porch was on fire, but I think the rest of the house, for the most part, was fine. And then she was starting to get another fire elsewhere, like, on the property. And he was, she was just, like, 20 feet away from him when he stepped out. And he was just like, what the fuck? He, he, he tries to get the hose. That's not working. He takes out his rifle. He points at her. And according to him, she didn't say, like, anything. She just, like, mumbled incoherently. And that's where, uh, you know, the drunk theory comes sure. in. She just mumbled incoherently and then ran to her car, but, like, not in a particularly fast way. Mm -hmm. So he got her license plate, and the police came, you know, minutes later, and they just found, like, she lived, like, a mile away. It was very easy to find her, uh, and she looks wasted in this picture. But, uh, oh, yeah, she was trying to set up a protein tank on the, the side of the home. A protein tank? Like, she had a protein tank. What's a protein tank? Is that what I said? Propane, propane tank. Propane shit. tank. Propane, propane tank. She had brought a propane tank and was, like, trying to set fire to that before I mean, that's an he explosion. brought the rifle out. Yeah, that's when he brought the rifle out. And she just backed up and was just, like, mumbling and then, and then fled. I would think she'd be like, D doesn't Jake live here? <laughs> My bad. Sorry about your hose and your and your porch. Right, but uh, yeah, I think she was just by the picture. She she looked black blackout drunk that she didn't know what the fuck was going on. Although she was able to drive like a mile home. What do you think made him angrier? The guy whose house got burned down. Do you think it was like the fire itself? Because the fire itself, you see that you're like, okay, I don't want to know who did it or why. Right now, I need to put out this fire. What do you think it was that she that she used flex seal? To seal off his seal. hose. Because that's flex when you're seal. like, well, this is a, why is she doing this to me? A fire, maybe it's an accident, maybe she's just out for kicks, but why would you ruin my hose? <laughs> I, I mean, you got to give her credit. In the, I mean, you, on some level, you kind of got to hand it to her. Uh, 100%. The, the flex seal alone. Flex but, seal, the but, tank. The tank? Is she it? had like bundles of wood in this, you know, oil, which got it going pretty quick. Like it oh. was definitely thought out except for the address. She must know where her ex-boyfriend lives. I think it was just she got so drunk she was confused. That's I mean, chainsaw theory. oil is thinking man's gasoline. So if you're using that to set fires at <laughs> someone's house, you kind of know what you're doing. I like that she would set fire to the porch first to smoke him out. And then he could watch his propane tank blow up. And be like, oh my God, all my protein. <laughs> It's just a typo. I mean, I do read, I, as you're seeing in person, I guess you knew before, but I've got, I've got many of the details written down here. I that, can't see. Your that computer's was, in the That way. was, uh, but you see me looking down. That was, that was, uh, that was a Ron Burgundy situation that we could edit you and wrote, post. You wrote protein and not propane? I wrote propane, but I just, you know, I said it wrong. Yeah, so it it's not a, that's not a typo. That's a brain fart. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Now I've got the control when we move to the next story. 27-year-old <laughs> Ohio resident Sydney Dean first met her future husband when she was in... Wait, how old is she? She's 27 now. Okay. 
27 years old. Uh, her name is Sydney Dean. And she first met her future husband when she was in the sixth grade. Unfortunately, she only met him because he was her boyfriend's dad at the time. Fast forward a few years. Wait, her boyfriend's dad? Okay. At the time. Gotcha. She, she's in she's sixth, in sixth grade, grade. She has a boyfriend. Grader. She meets the dad. Now, now she's married to that guy. Uh, fast forward a few years, basically. And I only mean a few. And those two lovebirds, the sixth grader and the, the, the sixth grader's uh, dad, were boning. Uh, she started dating her boyfriend's dad when she was 16, the age of consent in Ohio. How old are you in sixth grade? 10? No. 11 or 12. 12. 11 or 12. So she meets. So she never. So she broke up with the sixth grader she was dating in the sixth grade in sixth grade. A while ago, yeah. So they, they didn't continue their relationship. Should they date it for like. I'd, I'm going to guess like a, a sixth grade relationship, three months average. That sounds they date right. For three or four months, but she meets the dad and they're in the same community. So he watches her grow up throughout life. She's still in high school at 16, starts dating the dad. He kept like a relationship going on some level here that like she kept in touch with him Th through through the boyfriend who she's like remained in the same circle a as you're saying uh, but she was always like yeah that guy's cool so they started dating at 16 and he sounds cool and then uh and then when did they get married i don't know when they got married but they're married now they're married now i this is one where i probably should have just read the headline which was from the new york post which said i married my ex's dad everyone hates me but it's the best sex I've ever had. I love this. I lo that's the headline I, I chose this off of because it's obviously everyone's going to hate you. This is an interesting enough story of like, yeah, I dated a guy in sixth grade. I broke, we broke up like sixth graders do, but I kept in touch with the dad. And then when I was 16, started dating the dad and now we're married. People be like, oh my God, explain yourself. But to be like, it's the best sex I've ever had. That's, that's weird. That's weird. He groomed you. That's very strange. And she's bragging about it, what, on TikTok? Is that what the article said? Uh, I feel like New York Post now gets things from TikTok that she was like, hey, all you haters, I married my, my ex-boyfriend's dad. And saying someone you dated in the sixth grade is not your ex-boyfriend anymore. But it is someone you... It's but a, it is it's what you put it. If you're, the, you if you're the New York Post, of course. you put it in the headline, uh, and it's good. They got married six years ago. You know, I got to say, they don't look that... That like there's that huge uh, of an age gap. Uh, I mean, there's definitely a, a, a big gap, but you wouldn't have guessed it's that much. But her saying it's the best sex of her life. He groomed you when you were 16. Yeah, it's the only. How sex much? You've how ever much had. more sex did you have? You had sex, maybe with like 14 and 15 year olds before that. So you know, Ronnie's dad is beating those like. 14 and 15 year olds I, I i believe it and listen i have sex with 14 and 15 year olds all the time they're terrible they don't know what they're doing <laughs> you've truly got to teach them so i agree that's probably the best sex she's ever had she says it's the first real relationship um that she's ever been in yeah i believe that too uh is she hot i don't think it's like you know my place to be uh is she hot Just give me a scale of one to ten she wouldn't be my type no yeah, it's Japanese. No, that is not my type. I mean, it's the only. <laughs> Emika is the only um, Asian woman I've ever I've ever hooked up with. What a coincidence! Um, How old was she when you met her? Emika. Mm -hmm. She was twenty five. I How mean, old? I was like twenty or twenty four. I was twenty six at that point. You groomed her. Uh, my, that's my takeaway from this story. Is like, what the fuck, Ohio? I mean, this is Ohio. I thought it was down south. Ohio age of consent sixteen. Yeah, I mean that is that's that's grooming. How's the dad look? Scale of one to ten. I mean, neither of them are great. This is where uh, I feel like in future episodes, maybe we Ooh. can like show to our YouTube audience, like we'll be able to fly up uh, the pictures and stuff. That's rough. He, um, should, he shouldn't have, he shouldn't have gone with the bangs. How <laughs> do they have kids together? They they don't have kids. Okay, then that then th that drops from a couple of numbers. I gotta say, they sort of make they make sense though. They make sense together. They look happy, and yeah, I if guess you know the story. You'd be like, okay, he definitely seems older. It's it's a little weird, but if whatever makes you happy, sure. Why is she bragging about it? Was it a social media situation? Like, let me try to get uh, get some controversy, get some views. Who's liking the story? I don't know why the the story really popped up in the first place. Feels like a an Instagram thing, and then people. People got mad. And the, the biggest thing is basically uh, that everyone around her 
you know disapproves and now she feels like she's on an island she she took it for some reason this is a story uh in ohio in something called jam press I don't know what the fuck that is. I mean, that's why you got to move. You can't live in your hometown if you do this kind of, if you pull these shenanigans. You got to move to West Virginia, the Ohio of the West, and live your life. But yeah, I think it's weird whenever someone that much older dates someone that much younger, grooms them, which is the, the word you can use when they're 16, and then ends up marrying them and they start talking about it. Uh, that reminds me, congratulations to Dane Cook on his engagement. <laughs> Give me the whoosh. So I can get caught off uh, off guard. I was looking for more, you know, more good, good nuggets. You were quick on the push. There was a lot. Um, so going to executions is a thing, still a thing. Like if if sixteens consent in Ohio, that maybe they're doing um, public executions in Ohio. I guess I didn't really understand that going to executions was. Was well, so it's a, a public execution? I thought that was like town square, but this is like they're doing it in a gas chamber. You can come and watch. They have like witnesses. They have. People from the state. In this case, yeah, it, it's like the press, and it was lethal injection. Uh, it, it's Alabama. I've sort of lost track of like what fucked up shit you know is allowed in. You don't know in, the death penalty rules across the in nation. different states, but it's not a surprise that Alabama is in the where south. This story anything is goes. Anything yeah. goes in the south. Right. So Alabama Except abortion. is where a woman, a reporter. Uh, which I didn't understand at first, but a reporter uh, was barred from attending a little state-sponsored uh, execution because her skirt was too short. How short is too? Like, did they were they measuring? Is it like a school? It was dress an coat inch thing? and a half above her knee, which is not short at all. Nope. Like she showed a picture, it wasn't short, and she was just like, "This is totally just because my legs are long." She's like a a tall woman, uh, but it's not even it. You saw the picture. It wouldn't even occur to you. If anything, it's like medium to long compared to the average skirt. Skirt's I too would long. say. Yeah, if you get executed in other states, they're like, you better, you better hike it up if you want to come see this execution. But uh, you know what? It, obviously, there's something. It's not about the dress code. It's not about how the skirt being short. They just didn't want her there. But it kind of makes sense because women ruin executions. <laughs> they're always asking questions. <laughs> they don't know the rules. They're like, oh, that guy's cute. They're just talking too much. They're in your ear when you're trying to enjoy the execution with your bros, you know, <laughs> kicking back with a beer, maybe a hot dog and just hanging with the bros. You don't need a girl in there. It's a classic a Dane shit. Cook bit, mm -hmm. you know, how, 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 how the chicks just ruin the uh, st state sponsored executions. They ruin a man. They don't know. They can't keep their mouth shut in the execution. They start crying. You got to deal with that shit. You got to, they want to leave early. You know, you can't have that at an execution. You want to enjoy it. You want to sit there? Was she? She was a journalist. Yeah, she was a video news producer, and she, you know, she seemed like a badass. I sort of searched through this entire story, which blew up nationally, and uh, some other stuff related to her. Um, she got in, so you can say um, she snuck in. No, you can say that like uh, they were just trying to keep her out, and they were. It was a, a Department of Corrections officer who told her it was inappropriate and too revealing. Um, but what she did was she found a coworker, a, a photographer who had some waders, you know what I mean? Like yeah. W A D E R, like fishing pants okay. that was just like in his truck because in Alabama, everyone's just got a pair of extra waders yeah, in his truck. They weren't wearing them. And, and she, and he was like, you could borrow my, my pants. Like the ones with suspenders where it's all like mm -hmm. one thing. And so she went. He helped her, and she changed into these ridiculous waiters because she had to get this story. It was what she was reporting on that day. And she put on, like, this totally ridiculous outfit to go in. And they were like, that's okay, um, but your shoes are still too revealing. That, like, she was wearing shoes that, you know, showed Waiters her. don't cover your shoes? No. I thought waiters, you, like, step into them. It's like a rubber boot no, that like, goes all the way up. I think they're pants. Uh, and so the shoe was too revealing, and she had to also find, like, another way to cover up her uh, cover up her shoes. But she got in. She got in. If That's you go why you show up early to execution, mm -hmm. in case this shit happens. You want to get there early, get a good seat. And uh, it's not a bad idea to wear waders anyway <laughs> when you get there, just in case it gets a little messy. <laughs> um, I thought you were going to say she just, like, snuck in. Like, they just were pretty willy-nilly about no. it. They just didn't like her. Another reporter 
uh, after she complained and made, like she she didn't say anything about this. She reported on the story again, kind of a total badass move. Did everything and like two days, I think I think it was at least a day or two later, like sent a message about it after she had already sent like a complaint to the Department of Corrections to the state, like through the Associated Press. And another reporter mentioned even there that like she got the same comment. So I think it was what you're saying. It was just like a good old boy who like. He wanted his bros. It, like, that's his time. Yeah. It's my time to shine. I don't want chicks in here ruining it. Like, cancel culture has come and taken away all of our, quote, unquote, safe spaces. This execution is for us. Yeah, we don't need a woke execution. <laughs> Get the chicks out of here. Bros before hoes, unless they're wearing waders and, and boots. Shout out to Ivana. Ivana Shatara. Um, I mean, I, 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 it's not up to me. Who gets a special honor every week? But I would I would choose her because I just feel like she went above and beyond the call. But either way, she's getting a, a shout out on the Jesselnick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. JRVP, Ivana Shatara, Vice President. You know what? I'll, you know because it's our first time in in, uh, in person in a long time. We're doing it on camera. I'll let you kind of like nudge me over there. Ivana Shatara is the JRVP Listener of the Week. Woo! And now it's time for. Ad copy. <laughs> Zip Recruiter is out here helping business owners. So many things to do in the summer. It's hard to go through uh, all the resumes. It's a crazy job market out there. You want to you wanna take some time off. If you're a business owner, if you're a boss, Zip Recruiter helps free up your time to go do fun things like redo your deck or garden. That's fun. Those are fun. I mean, uh, I'm, the, I'm more of like a, like sit outside in my little backyard, take Nori, my uh, tortoise? tortoise out, read, and just like watch Nori. That's how I enjoy it. If I was a boss, I would get ZipRecruiter to help me find the best candidates so that they could do the work for me, and then I'd just be sitting out there reading possible recommendation stations. Uh, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter dot com slash jrvp ZipRecruiter uses the most powerful technology to find and match the right candidates for your job you can invite your top choices to apply they have a complete suite of tools that makes it very easy to filter review rate your candidates uh, four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day so soak up all that summer has to offer let ZipRecruiter do the work if you are ready for that url it's ZipRecruiter.com slash JRVP. That's where you can try it for free. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash JRVP. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Professional. Athletic Greens is uh, mm. back. What's the season? Cold and flu. <laughs> You're round. I mean, they say it's not cold and flu season, but you know who's sick right now? Uh, my daughter, Ellis. And you know why? Because she hasn't been mainlining that Athletic Greens. <laughs> we were in Japan. You can't take it with you. Uh, and she's sick. And it, it's disappointing. Um, you sound broken up about it. No, it is. It, it sucks for her. There's only a couple of weeks left of the summer. You can't get sad when you drink Athletic Greens. When your kids are sad, it really does make you... Uh, I mean, sick, rather. It does make you sad. But it seems like it was 24 hours. She's getting better because now we're feeding her the Athletic Greens now that we're home. Uh, athletic Greens... Has 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, superfoods, adaptogens. Do you know what an adaptogen is? Sure. What? No, you don't know. <laughs> we love this shit. JRVP loves Athletic Greens. Uh, yeah, you mix it up every morning. I swim in it. Uh, to be real, uh, it's... It's really my, my, my wife, Emika, uh, is the one that really powers through it every morning, and she loves it. And she doesn't have to power through it because it tastes good. It's one of my favorite things about it. It's all-in-one nutritional insurance. costs you less than $3 per day every morning. Uh, have it before you get going with your day. It's time to reclaim your health, arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. One scoop in a cup of water every day. I always fuck that up at home, but I didn't in person. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D, five free travel packs with your first purchase. 
All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash JRVP. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash JRVP to take ownership over your, over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Well done. And that was ad copy. I like what, reading the ads in person. You, you give it a little more. You know, you put yeah, your soul into it. it's better. It's more fun. I'm mad when I, you know, you sort of stumble there right at the end. But I'm, I'm thankful to Athletic Greens and our listeners because they're... Our like, viewers. Our viewers on YouTube. Check us out. Then you can see Anthony just in awe as I read the, the ads. Uh, because it's like there's a reason Athletic Greens advertise almost every week. Like our, our listeners are just chugging our viewers. that. Our, our viewers are chugging it. Like they can't get enough. They don't care if they already have the monthly subscription. They just get more. And they can listen better and view better because they're drinking Athletic Greens and they're healthier. We, we want you to live forever. All right. Our next story is about tubing. Tubing's fun. We had some fun tubing. Hell yeah, we did. Back in the day. Some of the best times in New Orleans. We only did it like three or four times tops, but it was always amazing. It was always like, I wish I could do this every day forever. Yeah. The, the problem was we weren't like organized. So we were just like, oh, you, you guys are going tubing? We'll go. And I would drive and everything sometimes. You would? I feel like we always get, there was someone, they run into school like bus. Van. They would no, drive I take us. it back. No, you're right. I'm, I'm remembering one time I drove and I remember, and that was like, a horrible mistake oh, and yeah. I, I never did it again but the the problem is like yeah we weren't like the organizing type but that was always that was an always an amazing like incredibly sloppy day if like if you were putting bets on like when is a day that someone in our group is gonna have a problem that sends them to jail or something like that that would be a tubing day but you were almost like too wobbly to even to do a crime no, I you get it, but just things could go wrong. But I nothing feel like ever things did. did. The times we did, no. Okay. We were we were sloppy and stupid, but it was fun. Well, they they went wrong in Wisconsin because you ha- you would tube, and then you'd have to go home and take a shower, like you couldn't yeah, go out true. and run around. You had to go home, and then no one ever made it out after that. You that went was, home, you washed off. That was kind of a, a one stop shop. That was like, as you would say, a gots to go situation. Once you were done with the tubing, maybe we would hit. Like we did that one Abita tour where you went to the Abita thing afterwards. Wasn't that uh, uh, involved with tubing or something? I don't think so. Uh, it, where you hit like a bar nearby afterwards and you're just disgusting. We went to a restaurant once and got kicked out for being too loud. Right. And you're in the wood. You're in the like deep woods of Louisiana. That's some real Louisiana shit. Mm-hmm. That's like, that's not New Orleans. I can't believe we didn't get fucking crocodile or alligator or snaked. It's fun. I, I want to do it again, but uh, maybe not um, in Wisconsin where a 17-year-old was killed and four others were stabbed while tubing in the Wisconsin River. Now, I did not read the story. Was it like a deliverance situation where they just going through and people just came out of the came off the shore and started stabbing or was someone so in their tubing party? Up. Break it down for me, Greg. It was one tubing group who gets sort of I I don't know if they got to the end or if they were just like stopped in the middle, which which you do. You have some beers, you stop in the middle at mm-hmm. one of the little sandbars or whatever. And one group just got attacked by what a member of the St. Croix, Croix? Oh, St. Croix. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. where it's from. Uh, St. Croix County Sheriff's believe was just another tubing group of six to eight people who stabbed so the it, shit it, out of them. So was it them. two groups of six to eight or? There was a group of, a group of five. They got stabbed. And a group of six to eight Did came up it. and stabbed them. This sounds like some horror. Were they movie floating in, at the time, or were they were they were on the beach and they came up? They or were on another, the shore. They were another tubing group. But were they on the shore at the time, or were they just like, were you floating around spinning and someone starts stabbing you? Are you in the tube, or are you like, or are you laying on the sand? I don't know. Ha- I don't have that information. What started it? Was it were they tubing and they started talking shit? Well, that's that's the thing makes it really crazy. Is at least from the most recent police story it seemed random or they don't know they can't figure it out i can't believe that it would just be like a vigilante scream style tubing stab group now they didn't have masks on or anything but like hey let's go fucking scare some 17 year olds and stab them that seems too much and it was supposedly just one person doing the stabbing uh and there had the other guys were spotting I, I, that's that's why part of it doesn't make sense to me. But at least as the police is explaining it now, they don't know what the connection was, what precipitated it. 
I got to think there's some beef here between the two groups. What I, I hope it's not random. What I'm gathering from this is you think that the bad guy in the Scream movies is a vigilante? I don't remember how they really explained it, but it was essentially... Uh, you think he's trying to, tr- trying to stop crime on his own without the law? Without the police? <laughs> I guess I don't know. I didn't really have a great grasp of the definition of what a vigilante means. No, nope. sounds like you don't. Um, and I'm not going to elaborate. I think. I mean, I would think it could be. It could be someone just going out to kill somebody because who takes a knife tubing? Why would you take a knife in an inner tube? You bring your beer. You bring a little, maybe a cooler if they don't provide the cooler for you. And when we would go tubing, they had the cooler and the ice. So we just brought beer, dumped it in, and had it alongside of us. Your only responsibility was not letting your cans float away. You'd kind of keep them in a the thing. You had your Ziploc bag for cigarettes. I don't think we, we weren't weed people back then in, in uh, New Orleans. But I can't, I, I think in Wisconsin, they're smoking some weed. But it must have been tubes bumped up. Someone was flirting with somebody else. And like, you know what? I'm going to stab these people. Uh, maybe they just went to stab the inner tube. Be like, Why would they be have like the knife? Home? What, they're, ki- they're killing fish with their hands or something? Maybe, maybe, you, up maybe someone just always has a knife. I couldn't imagine bringing a knife. I would believe a gun more than a knife on a on a tubing trip, unless you're afraid of snakes or, or a crocodile or an alligator. You don't want to get hit by those. I don't know. I, I sounds pretty uh, pretty shady. I, I think it was why. more of a targeted attack that they that they knew these people were gonna be tubing, and that's like a spot where they're gonna be easy to attack. They're not going to have any weapons. They'll be in the tube. It's always like, it's like uncomfort. You know, you're like in the tube and it's like your hands are up. Like you're not very mobile. No. This is, it's, I guess, um, a great place to stab people. You think it's tubing assassins? <laughs> you think it's tubing assassins? <laughs> no, I think it's two in... warring beefs and they knew, oh, they're going tubing this day. Let's Let's get a bigger group than them. Let's get on the tubing group after them and then Let's bum rush them uh, when we get the chance. So these guys are just floating down the river and they look up and see their mortal enemies yeah. just floating down there. And they're like, it'll be a while before they catch up. <laughs> That's true. It's not, you don't catch up quick. Maybe you could do a sneak attack around a bend or something. It is the best time to kill someone because even if you like, let's say the tubing is over and you get up, you're wobbly. You don't have your land legs for at least like an hour or two. If you're drinking in the tubes the way you're That's supposed true to. That's too. If you're sober in the tubes... I don't, know, I don't know what to tell you. You're tubing wrong. Well, there's the 17. I mean, there's, there's something terrible about stabbing. I mean, getting shot is... What, what is it, Greg? <laughs> I think it's the stabbing. Yeah. yeah. It's, the, it's the knife going in your body. But, like, it's, if I had to choose and you could tell me both are going to leave me in critical condition with a similar prognosis and I had the choice between getting stabbed or getting shot, I'm taking getting shot. That's, mm-hmm. less, that's less scary to me. But would you rather get shot tubing or not tubing? Tubing. I'd yeah. rather do anything tubing. Yeah, I agree. I think this is the 17 year old who died is kind of has it better than a lot of us in a way. <laughs> Four of them, though, th- they weren't messing around. They were in critical condition. Like it was not light, light stabbing. And it was one, one guy she, stabbed all these people. That's what they said. And then that's, that's the part where something isn't adding up between the numbers. But that's how I, I think if, read you, it. if you knife one, they wanted to kill one dude. The friends come to help them, and you get just like cut. You can be in critical condition right away. You get cut in the wrong place, and you're bleeding out. You're in an inner tube, uh. far away from any hospital. They don't if have like many tubes. If you're in the tube, I mean, that is truly nightmare fuel. That you're in that thing where your like ass is in the water, and you're like down in the thing, and you're like trying to get free, and you got Mr. Stabby coming up. Mm-hmm. Worst case scenario <laughs> for two of us. It makes me rethink uh, Wisconsin because I I think of Wisconsin as just like bucolic. People love Wisconsin. I feel like Wisconsin has great PR. It seems like if you were going to live in the Midwest, Wisconsin's a good place. Like Madison seems mm-hmm. like it would be good. It just it has a good reputation as like that would like but their image they don't have like a very tough image. It toughens up their image a little. They got a tough image. I feel like a lot of wrestlers come out of Wisconsin. Mm. I feel like they're like tough corn, guys, uh, yeah, corn not, fed, but like, not crime crime ridden. This this scares me a little bit about my... About I mean, it's certainly representative of the entire state. <laughs> so now you just got to do the whoosh now. You don't have to do the, the thing. It's true. You gotta, you and gotta we're going to we're gonna crank up this whoosh uh, in future weeks. I'm loving it. <laughs> a little, something, have, little tease for the, for the, uh, for the viewers. Get excited. After 168 episodes, like we're still, we're still breaking barriers. Um, after 168, you can also kind of uh, like predict which headlines we'll pick. 
and I feel like uh, an amusement park ride leading to death, you're probably going to make it. It depends. I mean, you're we probably gonna there's make a lot of amusement park it. rides where someone dies, but it's kind of right. sad. And people this send one, it to it. Okay, this so one's good. That, it makes it likely you got a chance. Um, an amusement park ride that keeps going after a woman falls to her death mid-ride, like that's definitely going to make now, it. Now, I, like I love the story. You always ask, like, what do I think is funny about this? Why would I choose this story? Uh, a lot of people, some people die on rides. Not a lot, but like a couple times a year it happens. It's usually like like their seatbelt didn't work. It's uh, employees weren't paying attention. Seems like more Someone's than that too according big. to our our uh, show. I feel like we have this quite often. A couple a year, uh, but I it's I mean people still go on these rides, but they always stop right when it happens. They stop. They shut it down. A lot of times they never open again. It's rare that it keeps going. And I chose the story because I do not know what the ride was, and there are different versions of this that can be funnier than others. It's it's probably the least funny version. The ride itself. And, it, and I think it's a little confusing. I had to find like three different like original source articles to get to the bottom that it was ultimately not even a ride. It was more of a chairlift that you took from the bottom of the amusement park to help to the top that you do get 60 feet up and like the amusement park and all the cool rides are like at the top of this mountain and everyone takes the chairlift up. And this woman fell like three quarters of the way up the chairlift and that and the chairlift just like kept going and people saw there was just like a dead body at the bottom there and just like people were still taking that chairlift they were like we're not shutting down i mean that's kind of understood because that that that's not a ride right i thought it was like oh, oh john fell out of the roller coaster oh no whoa like they just keep enjoying I, the next loop to loop this is transportation this is like, we got to keep, why would you stop this? Because someone fell off. If someone's like caught in the gears or whatever, yeah, stop the ride. But if they just fell down and were they, were they visible well, what from about, where they fell? Okay. You say like, why stop the ride? No, I'm, I'm, about, I'm saying I understand how they wouldn't stop this how compared about to like, a roller coaster. Eh, how about like, it's a little bit of a bummer to see the dead body uh, 50 feet below. That's literally how um, like... It was stopped was families telling others like by word of mouth like this one family was totally upset about this and they like ran down to the bottom of the mountain and they were like do not look down when you're uh, going up the chairlift there's like a dead woman at the bottom I think it's a teaching moment <laughs> you're with your kids you want you want to talk about seatbelt safety you want to talk about not fucking around on chairlifts who who, who, who fell was it an adult, a kid? It was a late 20s woman, and they're blaming her, and they're saying it's a suicide. But oh. it's, it's not official, um, but the police and certainly the amusement park are trying to say that it's a suicide, but they have to do a whole investigation and there's this one person on you know facebook who was like the lady that fell jumped like everyone saw it she did not fall on accident stop blaming the park which i get suspicious and just think oh that's someone who like works there putting a, a facebook post up uh, but you, you would fucking love your job to try to slander the death of a woman and i think if you're gonna if you're gonna commit suicide that's that's not a bad way to go be like everyone's gonna everyone's gonna know me now you, get, you can watch this and she probably would have wanted the ride to keep going let all the kids see her. Why? Why? Are you, oh, you, just to get seen by more people. I mean, it's sad. Um, no, just, just Why would that be a good way? Because she wants the world to keep turning. You know, don't turn off the chairlift at the amusement park. It's there for no reason. Maybe she just jumped, but that... I, it doesn't seem like a for sure way to die, it's though. It's hard to fall off a chairlift. No. But 50 no, feet? Pe people were saying there were some eyewitnesses that were saying like her bar was up the whole time and people were yelling at her like put your bar down or whatever and so it does seem pretty reasonable that she did jump off that seems like the worst fucking way i mean i don't know there's it's hard to imagine it in general but where was this because this could that could go so wrong you could easily just like break both of your shoulders it, and like be there at the bottom both of your shoulders I, if you just land a different land on a shoulder and then bounce up and land on the other shoulder you land That's on tough. both shoulders and maybe like you're i don't know what she tried to do but 
Fuck, it's dark. Like, are you, are you trying? Like, you have to have some sort of strategy. Strategy, because she was only like fifty feet up. I don't think that alone, if you like landed on your ass, is gonna kill you. So you have to sort of have a strategy. I would think that you try to like land on your head or your neck, and then you could just end up with the shoulder situation. Just make sure you, you did, think about. Just make you sure you don't about land this? on both shoulders. Okay. I haven't. I haven't thought about landing on both shoulders falling off a ski lift, and I've been drunk on a ski lift, and now it's time for. Choo choo! Recommendation station. Greg, what do you got? Do you, and do you have visual aids? I brought the book. This no, week. I don't. I can't in this case um, because I'm recommending an audio book. I'm re- recommending. Only, why would you wait until the first time we go to video it's to recommend what, an audio book? It's just what's up right now. It's what's up. It's, it's just what, what was next to? in line, is what I mean. I finally finished. Uh, this incredibly long audiobook. And it got me to something I've been wanting to do for a while, which is just recommending audiobooks in general. So the, the book is These Truths well, uh, by one more Jill time. Lepore. Is it a book as well, or is it just an it's audiobook? It's a book. Because now they have audiobooks that are only audiobooks. Really? Yeah. Which yeah. is interesting to me. But yeah, right. go ahead. No, I think this would be great as a book. I happen to listen to it as an audiobook, and it's read by the author Jill Lepore, who's a badass. She's a Harvard professor, a New Yorker, staff writer. I always like... If I see one of her articles pop up online, I, I read them because they're always really smart. Uh, and it's called These Truths. It's a one-volume history of the United States, which is normally not my thing at all. And I've gotten into audiobooks this summer, and this is why I'm kind of recommending audiobooks in general because I've always been a snob. I just want to read books. I, I'm not into even Kindles, whatever. But then I realized, like, I, I listen to podcasts so much, but I'm sort of running out of podcasts. It's just a way to read more books. And for me, it, audiobooks have now become a way to read more nonfiction books. Because mm-hmm. generally, I just like list reading fiction. Mm-hmm. But this is a way to like knock out some cool nonfiction uh, that, I, that I like. I also listen to Nothing to Envy, Ordinary Lives in North Korea by Barbara Demick, who also wrote a book uh, that, that you wrote, uh, recommended uh, many maybe a year ago now, like Buddha in the Attic about uh, Tibet. And that was really interesting about North Korea. So I guess I'm recommending two things, These Truths by Jill Laporte and Nothing to Envy, Ordinary Lives in North Korea. And my point is, uh, don't don't hate on audiobooks. I know lo- most people love audiobooks, but if you're really into reading and for some reason you were a dork like me and was like against it. Uh, you were? I just like didn't like, I didn't, I tried a couple novels and it didn't work for I don't, me it's and novels hard to, don't it's hard work to focus if i if i just like, I mean. lie down and i could listen to a novel but if i'm in my car or something it's got to be exactly so novels it doesn't work for me but nonfiction absolutely works for me and this book by the way i don't know if i'm just becoming kind of a dad because this is like a dad type of book it's been as i'm quite get, some time. getting older How your oldest 10 and 7 yeah but like i am getting a little more into like history like New this book shows. about north korea um, was fascinating. I didn't know anything about like what it's like to live in North Korea, and that's what this book was about. It's and great. these truths, it was an American history book, but she does it in a way where it's very much like a narrative. Like it's a big book; it's nine hundred pages, so it's it's an incredibly long audio book. It took me like two months of you know not nonstop listening, but it was really well written and well read too by her. What was the best thing you learned from the audio, history of America? Mm. Like, well, a lot stands out, but how about like right after the Civil War reconstruction? Like, what a crazy period that was for like black power. How, how high of a percentage of like black voting was in the populace? How many black people were elected in the South and were like running shit? And like, all the rights that they had for like this brief period after the Civil War because of all the rules of Reconstruction uh, happened that there was actually this moment that like they had fought for all these rights and it was like amazing and then it was like oh shit like we're coming back we're fucking white southerners and we're gonna make it worse than it was like almost worse than it was ever before and wipe all that out but that there was that little period I had no idea about any of that yeah it's like you got Obama now you're getting Trump yeah that sounds great. My book, I love this book, uh, Dirtbag Massachusetts 
by Isaac Fitzgerald. Hold it up to the camera. This right is into really the camera. something. Oh, uh, I heard looks, about this book. Anthony looked so awkward doing that. It's, so I don't happy. know which camera to go into. It's, a, uh, um, it's right in front Dirtbag of Dirtbag, Massachusetts, a confessional. It's a memoir uh, and like in a form of essays. We got Isaac Fitzgerald. Uh, just an amazing book. Really, I mean, the guy, It's he has interesting stories. Kind of like he w was kind of a, um, like a, grew up in like a very poor household, uh, mom and a dad. And uh, lived in like a poor part of Massachusetts where they just had to, he got fucked up all the time, was really smart, got into like a, uh, a private school on, uh, on scholarship. And then like his life afterwards kind of ending up becoming a writer. He like worked in porn for a little while. He was a bartender, uh, got really into motorcycles. Just every story is fascinating, mm. but it's the way that he writes that makes it so good. Like, I, this is the kind of book that I thought of different friends of mine that as soon as I finished it, I was like texting people being like, you've got to read this book. Mm. Uh, it's it, one of my favorite books of the year. I don't say that literally. Even if you don't like the recommendations we give and you don't, uh, you don't enjoy a lot of literature, this book is incredible. Definitely my top five of the year. And I was furious wow. I finished it and immediately went online to read more about this guy and saw that he had just been in LA last Wednesday at Skylight Books doing a, doing a reading and a Q&A with Emily St. John Mandel. She was mm. the one interviewing him that I would have killed to have gone to that, but I, I finished the book on like Friday. Uh, but it's, uh, and I text one of my friends I texted and he was like, oh, that guy's a friend of mine. I used to see him when I would do uh, perform in San Francisco. So he's written other things. He, he's written a lot, of, uh, a lot of articles, a lot of essays for things. And he's the fucking, uh, he's the book reviewer on Good Morning America. Like he goes on and like re and like reviews these what? like books. Really? Yeah. That mm -hmm. surprised me because I heard about this book last week too, and I heard him interviewed, and I listened to the interview because usually I don't want to spoil it. I just figured it wasn't a book I would necessarily read, and he sounded like such a badass and made the book sound good. That between him and you, I'm I'm sold. I'm gonna. It's read it. great, and he talks about his family in a way that I feel like. As an artist, you kind of want to talk about your upbringing and like your parents and their, their faults and their flaws, but you don't for like the sake of them. And he kind of gets into like how that's affected their relationship. And it seems better now, but it just, it was very interesting mm. to me that I, I was, I was, uh, I, the book you don't want to end. And every essay is just absolutely brilliant. Dang. Uh, Dirtbag Massachusetts by Isaac Fitzgerald. Buy it. It's like number two on the uh, New York Times uh, bestseller list for nonfiction right now. I'm sure it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a huge book. One of the best books of the year. Uh, check it out. And now that was choo -choo. recommendation station. Are, we, are you going with Debbie or going with Walker for the first uh, video? I mean, no offense to Debbie, but she already got her shine this No episode. offense, Debbie. Keep your, uh, keep your hooters in your hands. We're going with Walker. Whoa, Nelly, for Tonto. That's a spicy meatball. <laughs>